Well, hello. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Doing well? Um, so you are? Uh, my name is Matt Sullins. I'm the general manager of Stone Cloud Brewing Company, Stillwater. Nice. Nice. Located where? 917 South Husband, Stillwater, Oklahoma. <laughs> Subtle plug. Um, so what do you do? How, how, how do you like it so far? Um, what's uh, your job description? Um, uh, I am a, the doer of things, I guess. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to narrow down what I do. I manage personalities, beer orders, tinker with some science, fix things that need fixed. Kind of a all-encompassing job. Um, I love it. Um, no two days are the same. I get to meet, you know, countless people every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Good. Uh, you mentioned tinker with some science. What does that entail? Oh, <laughs> just just like uh, you know, mixing our our seltzer cons, our sucks, uh, our seltzer cocktails, and just you know, beer is science. You yeah. know, and just just that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so Stone Cloud is relatively new to Stillwater. Um, yeah. What was kind of the process of you know deciding? Obviously, it's a chain, and you have a couple in other places in OKC, I believe. Um, well, no, our uh, our owner Joel Irby is from Stillwater. Okay. Um, he graduated from Stillwater High School, moved to Colorado, worked for Avery Brewing Company and Boulder Brewing Company, and then decided to move back to Oklahoma to to start a brewery. Um, he chose OKC over Stillwater simply because of population yeah. density, but the, the plan was to always, always open up here in Stillwater. Um, so we opened the OKC tap room in 2017, um, and then, then we started the process of opening up this location about a year and a half ago. Um, but yeah, the, the goal was to always, always be here in Stillwater. So we've have, this is our second location. So we yeah. have one, our, our main tap room in OKC and then now this one. Okay. And, and this started in the summer, correct? Yes. Our, our opening day was June 18th. So June we're a little 18th. shy of our four month birthday. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Um, going strong. Yeah. Yeah. It's been nonstop since we opened. Um, the community has been very, very welcoming to us. Uh, they seem to like what we do and yeah. we like them back. So it's a, it's a very like symbiotic relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And I know being in, being in a college town is probably pretty different. Um, from being in, in a large city like OKC? Sure. I mean, it, it poses its own challenges just with the, uh, the influx of college students that are in certain parts of the year. But with us, we opened up during the summer, so we got to really kind of open up just to the community at large and, and the, the, for lack of a better word, townies, the people that stay and live in the community. Um, and we did great. We had a wonderful summer. We were full every night, um, and that's continued into the school year. It's been really, really nice. Yeah. Um, I guess that's probably just... Uh, you know, being in a college town, you know, I, I wish there was a target here, but sure. <laughs> we don't have a large enough population when the school year is not in session. So I mean, we're okay. at about 50,000 almost when school's not in. So we're, we're growing, we're growing. Yeah. We need a lot of things more than, a, I think more than, a, more than a target, but I, <laughs> I would definitely take a target. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you, you manage the tap room here and obviously you have lots of workers under you. Yes. Um, what is that process kind of like, you know, how do you go about your management strategy and, you know, making, uh, Stone Cloud, a welcoming place to everyone that comes in. Um, I think it's just important that whenever, I mean, beginning with the hiring process, whenever I interview somebody for a job, my my goal isn't really to to hire the people that have the most beer knowledge. I try to hire personalities and and people with with intelligence that can hold conversations and and have anecdotes to talk. People can 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 form relationships with people. Um, I always say I can I can teach beer to anyone, but I can't teach personality. Yeah. Um, so it's, it all starts in the interview, you know, get people to talk, um, learn who they are a little bit about them, see if that's going to fit in with what we're, our mold is. Um, and then once we get somebody on, it's just a matter of working alongside them and kind of preaching to them what we want, which is we're the hardest working, friendliest people in town, yeah. you know, and then just living by that example and, and setting that example to the staff. It's pretty much how I rock. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we spoke about that a little bit in our conversation before, but you mentioned that you're not one to, you know, stand by and just tell people what to do. No, you know, you, no. You got to uh, lead by example. And exactly show right. What to do. Exactly right. Yeah. Delegation only works when the one delegating works. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I consider myself a working manager. So I'm here first. I'm usually the last one to leave. Um, yeah. I mean, just, just try and, you know, lead by, I, I, there's a difference between a leader and a boss, yeah. you know, and, and I try to be a leader. Um, I think it, it translates better to the staff. I, I do the, the dirty jobs that I wouldn't want to ask someone to do yeah. <laughs> that way in case I ever do have to ask them, you know, they can never argue me, argue with me about it because they know that I would be doing it if I could. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel like that's a motto that every manager needs. Uh, I wouldn't want to work at a place with somebody Hopefully. who's just telling me what to do. Hopefully. Yeah. Not actually doing it. Um, 
But so with with Stone Cloud being uh, a brewery, you know, you might not have uh, as many people come on weeknights, uh, and certain things like that. So what are some of the things that you try to do uh, as uh, a brewery to make it more fun to people who come in? Sure. Well, I mean, whether you're running a brewery or a restaurant or really any business, you know, I mean, I track not just like how much money I'm making, but like when I'm making it, yeah. what people are buying and when, what times, you know, and you just try to like pay attention to what nights need more. Our goal is never to have something every night. Um, yeah. We want to provide a space that's welcoming that people can just come and enjoy their company. Um, and that can sometimes be interrupted by events constantly. Um, but we identify what nights, you know, we don't have as strong a business and then we try to figure out ways to draw people in. So we do, we do trivia night on Mondays. We do concerts and live music on, on Tuesdays. And then that's really about as much as we do Wednesday night. We have a, a, a strong partnership with the Stillwater, um, run Cl runners club and, um, trying to it's Stillwater trail and road runners. Um, and the district bicycle bicycle, they do a, a community hop ride. So they do a bike ride that ends here every Wednesday night. The runners do a, a, a big group run that, that, and so they bring in about 70 to hundred people every Wednesday wow. night for us. Um, Thursday night, we get that pre weekend push, you know, and that leads us into the weekend. So, so really, I mean, the main goal is to just pay attention to what the numbers are and kind of try and, I don't know, fi figure out how to, how to make them go up yeah. where you need them to. Yeah. And that kind of leads into the next topic I wanted to talk about. We we spoke about your passion for nonprofit work and yeah. um, how much Stone Cloud gives back to the community. Uh, what was kind of uh, your process for that? What was your leading you to to want to do something like that? And, and what are the processes that you guys take for that? Sure. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. I was raised. Uh, my dad instilled in me a strong sense of of community and and participation in the community. Um, so that's kind of where, where that kind of began for me personally, I, I'm on the board of the humane society. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I don't know, I've always said like one of the things I love about working in breweries and working in beer is it allows me the opportunity to maybe contribute in ways in, or in greater ways than I could simply as an individual. Um, so we do a lot of, a lot of community events, um, a lot of fundraising events. We did a Christmas in July toy drive for uh, wings of hope, which is the community family outreach center. Um, I'm dancing with the stars for the Seville Center and we're going to do a, a promotion for them. We've had, I think, three and we're about to have our fourth adoption event for the Humane Society. Oktoberfest, part of that, that party um, included what we called Barktoberfest, which is sort of like a mini animal expo where we, we raised over $1,000 for the Humane Society that day. Um, yeah, we've done work with, with I'm trying to think, Our Daily Bread, um, which is the local food bank. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just I, I try to give back. You know, we can have fun, but if we can have fun while also like helping the community at large, then I think that's that's a win win for everybody. Yeah, why not? You yeah, know, give to the community; they'll give back to you. Exactly right. You yeah, know, exactly right. Yeah. So, what would you say is your favorite thing? Uh, whenever you come in for a day of work, uh, what do you enjoy most? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I do enjoy the beer, uh, but no, <laughs> I I enjoy just getting to getting to meet people, talk with yeah. people, um, just to, like I said, a, a sense of participation, you know, it's easy to not, to, to live in a community without ever really participating in it. But it, through this and through my works here, you know, people come and speak to me every day and ask me for things or, or ask my opinion on things. Like I enjoy that aspect of it. Um, just the sense of, of belonging to the community, I think is the thing I enjoy the most. Yeah. And then ha have you, what was your work experience like before coming to Stone Cloud? What kind of got you into sure. the beer industry? Um, well, I'm from Chicago. Um, I manage several beer bars and breweries, tap rooms um, in Chicago. I worked in sales um, for several breweries. Um, I've got about, I don't like to date myself, more, more experience than I'd care to say <laughs> out loud. Uh, my first management job was in 97, if that gives you an idea. Um, but but yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I just I was in the beer community. I like being around smart, intelligent, passionate people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, for the most part, the brewing industry is. Yeah. You know, it's people who could who could take their their ability and talents and make a lot more money in other industries. But they do this because they enjoy what they're doing, yeah. um, you know, for for a multitude of reasons. Um, and I just I like being around that. So whenever I moved back to Oklahoma, I graduated from Oklahoma State. No, too. I guess I should have said that. Um, but whenever I moved back to Oklahoma for uh, family reasons in 2016, um, I just got in with the beer community here. I managed the garage here in town for yeah. a while, 
met Joel and uh, hit it off and, and just wanted to be a part of it. I love and respect what he does and yeah. just wanted to be a part of it. So what, what about Joel Irby and his vision for Stone Cloud kind of drew you in? Ooh, I mean, I would just say the, the dedication. Um, we have one of the probably more state-of-the-art laboratories, quality control, um, I guess, I don't know, departments of, of any brewery in the state. Um, we take what we do very, very seriously while, while taking what we ourselves not so seriously. He's a really cool guy, fun down to earth, but he knows his, his stuff and he's on top of his game. And I just, I like being around that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, I, I want to be around people that, that are going to push me to be better um, and drive me forward to where I want to be as a person. And I think he does that. Um, as a company, we're very welcoming. Um, and just, I don't know. I like, I like everything that we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the tap room, uh, th that's something that's very interesting to me. I, I've been in one or two tap rooms, but it's always such a surreal experience when I'm in there. Cause I have no <laughs> idea what anything does. Sure. <laughs> um, and so with the state of the art equipment, what are some of those things that you can do that separate yourself from other, um, breweries? Oh, uh, well, I mean, a lot of what we do is, is we do a lot of sensory tests. Uh, which means like once the beer is finished, um, it's not finished for us. Yeah. You know, like once we've got a beer packaged, kegged, however, um, you know, those guys have strict guidelines. We have, we have high standards for what our stuff should taste like. Yeah. Um, and so throughout the lifetime of, of any batch of beer that we do, we're constantly doing sensory tests um, to just ensure that, that everything tastes up to our standards. And then the moment that it doesn't, we, we just, we're not scared to destroy it. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And I love that. Uh, it, you're not complacent with you know, no you, you, yeah, get a, no. you get a good tasting beer you're not just going to sit there and no be like, oh we'll serve yeah. this forever you know complacency always... kills exactly like it's, yeah it, it's it's the second you've gotten complacent you've lost the game yeah, yeah. so what what kind of goes into the creation of a beer um water hops grain and yeast yeah but... <laughs> no, those, those are the four ingredients uh there are a lot of 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 things that go into any particular batch of beer um Sometimes it's, it's just a style that we want to brew that maybe we haven't done before. Sometimes it's a collaboration with friends and we just want to do something that we're going to enjoy. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's just a, Hey, do you think we could do this? Yeah. Um, so really there's no one answer to that question. Um, yeah, we just try to push ourselves, you know, and try to create the best that we can create. Um, but then, then once we've decided on what to create, then it's the work of a lot of people. Um, we've got, um, a graphic designer that does all of our labels. She works really hard on that. We've got a production team that'll work on everything from milling the grain to, you know, the brew day itself. We've got a packaging team that's going to make sure that the kegs are filled and that the cans are, are filled and sealed. Um, and then that gets out to our sales team and our distribution team, you know? So, I mean, it's a lot of, a lot of work um, by a lot of different people goes into every beer that you taste. Yeah. And I love that, you know, you, you said the basic four ingredients, but there's such a creative aspect behind it with those four ingredients. Oh, sure, yeah. Because, I mean, there are so many different kinds of beer oh, out it's, there. Oh, it's infinite. Yeah, I always, anytime someone tells me that they don't like beer, I always say they need to add the word yet. Yeah. Um, because you can make beer taste like anything. Um, I always say a, a brewmaster is more akin to a chef than to any other, like, you know, liquor distiller yeah. or fermenter. Um, just because of the infinite, you know, variety of ingredients um between you know your water chemistry you can start manipulating the mineral content of your water and all of that's going to have a, a a different um result in the end the end game um you've got you know hundreds of varieties of hops the time that you spend in the boil what time you introduce them the length of the boil all of that is gonna gonna create differences in, in the end product you know, different strains of yeast that you can choose from. Um, and then, then that gets us to grain and, and your grain bill can be an infinite combination of hundreds of different types of grains that have all been roasted to different and varying levels. So, I mean, in every, every single detail has a, a, an impact on that finished product. So it, it is, there's a lot of thoughts that goes into beer more than what most people who drink it, you know, think about, <laughs> yeah. but, but there's, it's a, you know, it's, it's one of the things I love about it. You know, it's like, like I said, I mean, I just can't, I can't talk to it enough about just, just being around really smart people who are passionate about what they're doing. Um, and it's just a joy to be a part of that. Yeah. And with everything that goes into the creation of a beer, including 
um, you know, you're managing the tap room, you're, you play a role in distribution um, and all of these things. How do you go about managing all of your different responsibilities and not getting, you know, foggy head and, you know, you got so many responsibilities on your plate? I will never say that I don't get foggy head because that <laughs> would be a lie. Um, there's, a, I don't know, there's a lot. Time management, I would say, is a skill that's important, but I don't think it's really, I don't think that's unique to my job. I think time management's important to regardless of, of, of the industry that you're in. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I keep my email folders very organized. Um, <laughs> I write everything down when possible. Um, and I rely on like the people on my team, you know, to help me. Um, you know, no, no person is an island. Um, yeah. so it's like, it, it's, it's not just me that I may have the job title manager, but, but it's, it's the whole team that manages the space, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, no, without everybody else and without, you know, certain technological advancements, it would mm -hmm. be very difficult. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you just do what you can with what you can and try to keep everything organized as best you can. Yeah. I think you made a, a great point there with the, a lot of people, whenever they, hear or get that management role they're like okay it's all on me now um whereas that i feel like that's just not the case um, yeah no i mean i i forget who said it but like a good leader you know takes none of the none of the credit but all the responsibility and blame so really whenever you get that management title all that's telling you is is that the, you know the 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 end result is going to be you're going to be judged on it if it's poor yeah but you might not get the praise if it's good. But that's that's also what you want, you know. I mean, my goal is to be obsolete. Mm -hmm. You know, if I train my staff correctly, and and they're doing their job, I don't, you know, I I, I disappear and fade into the background, and that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if that that answers your question or no, what. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and you've mentioned a lot about your team and you know the process of getting a good team you know it's not just people who know a lot about beer you're sure. hiring for personalities sure um, how pivotal is that team in running such a successful business as stone cloud oh it's everything i mean it's a lot of moving parts you've got to have a lot of trust in the people that are that are here i mean we're open 72 hours a week i can't possibly be here for yeah. every one of those um so it's important to just have people that you can trust and rely on um to do and act the way you would want them to be when you're not in the room. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think the way you build that is through respect, like mutual respect. Um, I set standards that I think are, are well known amongst my staff because I'm here working alongside them and they see what I'm doing and how I want it to be done. Um, and ideally if they have any questions, I, I think of myself as an approachable person. Mm. Um, so if they have questions, they can reach out and ask me, but like communication is key. Um, and then just setting, setting those standards where you want them to be and then not compromising yourself on those. Yeah. How did you go about setting those standards for yourself? What was your thought process behind this is who I am. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to run my team. Sure. Um, I paid attention to all the bosses that I had, uh, as I, as I grew up in my career and just as a person, um, both the good and the bad. I always say, I think I've learned. I think I've learned more through my career from the bad managers that I've had I as that. I did through the good ones. Um, just by paying attention, like if someone treated me in a way I didn't appreciate or spoke to me in a way that I didn't appreciate, like I remembered that, Yeah. you know, and then whenever given the opportunity to speak to someone, I chose not to speak to them in that way or treat them in that way. Um, I think respect goes a long way towards, towards building a team environment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I, I love that point of, you've learned more from the bad than oh than sure from the good yeah bad bad examples you know it's like i don't try to, to prevent my staff from making mistakes i think the best way at least me personally i learn more from the mistakes that i make yeah. than i do from my victories yeah um it's not to say i don't learn from my victories i learn that they feel good but but you <laughs> wouldn't have those victories without all the mistakes that that took you to, to build that up um and so in that same regard yeah like the they might not be my mistakes, but the mistakes of, of previous bosses, I just pay attention to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, I feel like with mistakes, it's very important to teach your team to know that mistakes are not a terrible thing. Sure. Um, and inevitably, everyone's going to make a mistake. And yeah, so no, it's, it's, I make them all the time. Rarely a day goes by that I don't, I don't you know, look back on the day, it's something I could have done better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's not about preventing mistakes. It's about learning from them. Um, I'll forgive any mistake once, 
mm-hmm. you know, within reason. But, <laughs> but it's that second or third time that the mistake gets made. That's when it's like, okay, then there's a disconnect. Yes. Um, and then you have to take a step back and be like, what do I have to do to maybe coach a person or get a person to kind of see where where the fault lies yeah. or where the problem ar- lies so that we can solve it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really all you can, all you I, can do, you know? Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's all you can ask for from someone is to hopefully learn from the mistake they made yeah. so they don't make it again. Exactly. Like, you right. can't ask them to never make a mistake. Yeah, no, anymore. exactly. That's unrealistic. You yeah. know, realistic expectations are important in, in pretty much every aspect. So it'll, it'll lead to less disappointment. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what is, one piece of advice that you could give a listener or a viewer or someone wanting to go into a management position, what is one piece of advice you would give them to have a successful career? Um, Listen to the people around you. Like even like your employees, collaboration to me breeds more success than any one person. Um, So yeah, I mean, even if you're in charge of people or we're responsible for, for people's employments, don't take that responsibility for granted, but also like Listen to them. I mean, if they're the ones working the job on a daily basis alongside you, take their ideas into account. Absolutely. You know, um, I always say like, like they I might not do everything that, that my staff suggests, but I will listen to everything that they suggest. And sometimes they have ideas and perspectives that are different from mine and different from mine doesn't necessarily mean bad. Sometimes they've opened my eyes to, to thinking about things in ways that I wouldn't have, have maybe done that. Um, so I would just say like, if, if you're new to management, you don't have to crack whips, you know, I mean, it's important to be stern and not compromise yourself on your rules and your standards. You have to build that respect. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about, it's all about respect. It's all about treating people with dignity and, and realizing that we're all people. Yeah. Um, and just kind of, kind of living, living that way. Yeah, you know? exactly. And I mean, if you're working for a manager that you love and that you respect, like your work is ultimately going to be better, way yeah, more better. Ideally. I mean, ideally, yes. I mean, People are going to put in the effort, you know, for you if, if they respect you more than if like, Ugh, I don't want to do this. Exactly. He's kind of a jerk. I don't want to work for him. Exactly. You know? So it's like, yeah, no, it's it's important. Um, it's very important. So, yeah, I mean, I would say like end of the day, just respect is, is the, the ultimate key to, to winning people over and to just. I don't know, being successful in just about anything you do. Yeah. And it's, it's much easier to do work when, when it's something you love. I've, I've learned that in just sure. in undergrad in, in school, you know, if I'm in a subject that I don't like, um, I'm not going to want to do it. Oh, My sure. work's not going to be as good, but if I'm in a subject I love, I'm going to put in the effort, put in the time to learn that subject sure. and my work's going to be a lot better. Sure. Um, but yeah, well, it was great talking to you. We always like to finish off the, uh, these podcasts with little rapid fire questions. Okay. Um, and so, Prepare yourself. We want some quick answers. Nothing too crazy. Oh, so okay. just be ready. All right. Dogs or cats? Dogs. All the way? All the way. Why? I have five dogs at home. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. They, have you always been a dog person? I have always been a dog They're, person. Yeah. Dogs I like all people. fuzzy, fuzzy, cute things, but but dogs love you back. Yeah. Cats tolerate you. <laughs> that's, I think, I think that's really where, it, where it's at for That's me. a fair point. Uh, TV shows or movies? Movies. All the way? Mm-hmm. Uh, depends on the tv show nowadays i feel like the line between tv show and movie has been blurred with like game of thrones and things like that but like i don't know i like epic storytelling regardless of the format yeah Uh, game of thrones is a great example because those episodes are basically movies yeah yeah i mean nowadays you got tv shows that are an hour and 20 minute episodes it's like that's longer than some movies i like exactly uh favorite pizza topping Ooh, well probably sausage okay but i mean or cheese i don't know if there's just one I don't know. So I'll, I'll go with sausage. Yeah. Safe answer. Sausage. Yeah. And a rebuttal question to that is pineapple on pizza. Okay. Yes. hundred percent. One hundred percent. I eat pineapple on anytime I order pizza. I always get at least one that has pineapple on it. So I, yes, I think that's the first yeah. thing we've disagreed on all day. Oh man. That's all right. That's all right. Disagreement's fine. That is fine. You can well, be wrong. We learn okay. from our mistakes. <laughs> um, texting or calling? Uh, texting. 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 Not a big phone call guy. Uh, you know, if I have to, but but I'm that guy that if I get a text that says you need to call me, I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. I mean, I'll do it, but it'll be reluctant. Yeah. No, um. I'm I'm right there in that <laughs> same boat with you. Uh, what's your favorite season? Probably a toss up between fall and spring, just because they're the time. I I love being outdoors. I like to kayak yeah. and camp, and those are the two seasons. At least in Oklahoma, I get about four weeks combined <laughs> Not much. between those two seasons yeah. to do those things. But uh, 
Yeah, I would say e- either of the non-extreme seasons. Yeah, that's fair. I, w- I would agree with that. Maybe I would... I'd lean towards fall just because Thanksgiving Ooh. You know, and Halloween. But <laughs> Oh, Paula over here loves Halloween. Uh, we're going to have favorite. a big Halloween party here, just letting oh. you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? It will be oh, October, yeah. well, October 29th, which is that Saturday. But we'll be kind of... We'll be kind of partying for Halloween from the Friday through the the thirty first, which okay. is the Monday. Um, we're but, doing the we're that's that's a couple of a big events are kind of kind of snowballing for us and kind of culminating on that weekend. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of an experience. It's gonna be a yeah, fun party. Good. That yeah. that sounds great. Um, and that big party is on that uh, the twenty ninth. Twenty ninth. Yeah, but Saturday. but anytime I'm involved, party. <laughs> that's good to hear. Um, what's the last song that you listened to? The last song that I listened to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, it was um, <laughs> Pure Imagination from the Smoking Popes, actually. Pure Imag- I don't yeah. think I've heard of that it's one. It's a good song. It's, yeah. a, it's a remake of the song from Willy Wonka from back in the day, ah. but it's a, it's a beautiful song. That version's really cool. Good. Do you, do you fancy yourself a big music, music guy? I enjoy music, yeah. I mean, I don't get the chance to listen to what I want to listen to a lot because of work, but, but yeah, I love, I love music. I'm a big jazz fan and blues fan. So, yeah. yeah, except for live music on Tuesdays, right? Oh, yeah, no, always live music <laughs> on Tuesday. No, I love, I, love me- I love music a lot. Um, it's a big part, part of my life, so yeah. Yep, if you're ever not doing anything on a Tuesday, come yeah, to Stone live Club. Music. Yeah, we have Dan Martin tonight. <laughs> uh, what, so what's your favorite music artist? Uh, ooh. I know, ooh. That, that one's kind of tough. Hard for rapid fire. We'll give yeah, you some time. Yeah, I would say Alice in Chains is probably my favorite band of all time. Um, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden is my favorite singer of all time, but I also like Grateful Dead. Kind of depends on the mood, you know. Like yeah. it's like asking my favorite movie. It depends on the day. <laughs> Very tough. You could ask me that question fifty times, and I give you fifty different answers. <laughs> Very fair. What is one place that you want to travel that you haven't traveled to yet? Ooh, I would love to visit um, Athens just to see like the uh, the Parthenon and all that stuff, like the Greek. I know I'm, I'm a big I was a big mythology guy. I'm a big history buff. So I would love to see like some of the, the, the Greek ruins and stuff. What are some of the places that you've traveled that you have loved? Oh, it was a lot. Um, I like Germany a lot. Um, Munich's fun. Um, they drink beer for breakfast over there. They do. In fact, <laughs> yes. Uh, London is a good time. And then here in the States, I mean, Honolulu's great. Mm. San Diego's great. I'm from Chicago. So, I mean, I like to visit my hometown any chance I get. New Orleans is a fun town to hang out in. Yeah. Would uh, you, uh, all Chicago sports teams? No, actually, all Chicago sports teams except for the Bears. I'm a Lions fan. Oh, wow. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, interestingly enough, because of Barry Sanders mm. and Oklahoma State. Yeah. yeah. Go Pokes. Go Pokes. Gotta love it. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I could have said I was an Eagles fan before they had the incredible season that they're having now. Sure. But I promise I'm not a bandwagon. <laughs> um, I'm an Eagles fan. My dad was born and raised in Philadelphia. They so beat us week them. one, so like I'm not the I'm not the biggest fan. And, that, of and now they have uh, Malcolm Rodriguez. Uh, oh yeah, from yeah, LSU. Yeah, he's, go, he go is doing again. great. Yeah, he's the number two jersey seller this year. Absolutely, really? I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. Who's number one? Uh, well, this is just for the Lions. Number okay. one would be Goff. Our quarterback. Oh, okay, yeah, Jared yeah. Goff. Yeah, which I yeah. hate that I know that, but yes, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, well, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks, it man. was wonderful to have you. Wonderful to speak. Um, if any of you listeners out there ever want to come to Stone Cloud, Matt's always here yes. and always willing to talk to you. Yes. But again, <laughs> thank you for coming on thank and, you. and we really appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. Mm-hmm.